So here I'm going to run the transmit and receive test on all the bands as this is capable of doing. Low VHF, mid-range VHF, high VHF, and low, medium, high UHF. So the lowest this could go is uh, 136. And here are my service monitor. On high power is 5 watts. That's pretty good. 5. So that's uh, 4. Excuse me. 4. 4.7 deviation. Meet specs. Uh, frequency error is 26 Hertz that's that's pretty good um, and everything looks cool there all right that's good so my receive test I'm pumping in 0.15 microvolts of uh, frequency and that tone that's my test tone of 1k and the spec industry spec is uh, 12 dBs at around 0.18 around there I forgot what the spec of this here that's pretty damn good. That's, that's uh, a little bit above average uh, for radios that are out there. 0.18 and it kind of sounds like it's 12 dB of Synad. Uh, that's, that's an industry standard and uh, I, could, I could tell by listening to it. I, I don't have it actually measuring it but listening through the ear you know that uh, you can hear that sizzling bacon sort of sound in the background of your 1k tone there you know in, in other words static uh, and to my ears it sounds like it's uh, around 20 dBs or so so that, that's pretty good here's the receive test for the middle of the VHF band 155.5 megahertz and I'm pumping in 0.15 microvolts and that sounds about 12 dBs of uh, Synad and that's pretty good so that's the receive side of the house. Now let's test transmit 155.5 megahertz. Low power is uh, 8 millivolts, milliwatts rather. Frequency error 330 hertz, pretty good. And deviation for my subtone is uh, 0.5, which is standard, okay. Five, five, around five uh, kHz of deviation of voice. That's pretty good, or within specs. Okay, power on this is four four watts in the mid range mid range, uh, one fifty five point five megahertz, four watts. That's still pretty good. Batter I still got a full charge on the battery too. Now this is the high end of the VHF, the highest it could go. 173.995 megahertz. And low power is uh, almost half a watt. Deviation of your subtone is uh, 4.4 kHz. Five, around five kHz of deviation. Frequency error, 32 hertz. And let's see what it is on high. High power is four and a half watts for 173.995. Not too bad. Reception on 173.995 at 0.15 microvolts. That sounds about 12 dB cyanide around there. So that's pretty good. Really good. So here's receive for 400 megahertz, the lowest it could go on UHF. And the level that I'm pumping in there is. Uh, 0.19 I had to bump it up a little bit to get sort of the same 12 dB cyanide level as the VHF but that's still well within uh, industry standard specs so that's pretty good here and you can hear the uh, 
the sizzling bacon or the static in the background there, the signal to noise ratio. Now, for transmit on 400 megahertz, it's uh, almost one watt, 933 milliwatts at low power. It's uh, 64 hertz off frequency, which is still pretty good. Uh, let's check out deviation here. Five, five. Uh, that was five kilo kilohertz of uh, deviation. Pretty good. Now for power out on high, uh, it's going to be one watt lower than the VHF uh, band. So four watts. Let's see if it's true. F around four watts, 4.08. That's uh, good for the low end of the v UHF band, 400 megahertz. Now this is the middle of the UHF band, 460 megahertz. And high power net is 4 watts, good. 5, full deviation, 5.4 kilohertz. And frequency error, 67 Hertz that's still pretty good and uh, overall it's pretty good now this is the high end of the UHF band the highest you could go low power is 900 milliwatts deviation by 4 by 4 average 5 K Hertz of deviation frequency error 0.65 Hertz still pretty stable and let's check high power here real quick and let me show you how to do high power real quick by the faceplate menu menu power enter low high enter escape escape there we go. Almost 4 watts, 3.85. So that's within spec. Good. So here's my receive test for 469.995 megahertz. I'm putting in 0.19 microvolts and that's this is what it sounds like. So that's, that sounds about 12 dB of Synad, and that's uh, within specs, pretty average, just like any other radio. Now here's a test on the second radio on 155.5. I'm just going to do one frequency real quick to see if there's any difference between the two. So transmit on 155. High power is 4, 4 watts. 3 hertz of DV of uh, frequency error. That's really good. Five, five, five. Around 4.8, 4.9 k hertz of deviation. So it, it, it follows pretty closely. So let me see. Uh, that's receive test now, and that sounds about. 0.14 uh, of dB synad and I'm pumping in 0.16 microvolts that's really good and uh, yep so they both run pretty close I heard that uh, some 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 of them are different but the two that I got are okay now testing out these uh, rubber ducky antennas here uh, they're okay I mean, uh, but they're not true wideband antennas, so you're not going to get the performance of 136 all the way up to 175. Like right here, the center frequency of this guy here is basically 150, and I'm getting a good return on 150 megahertz. So let's see. So from 145 
to about 159 is where the true bandwidth of uh, on the VHF uh, is located at. So I'm, I'm going to test out two other antennas of this to see what it says. This one here is uh, just within specs so it's, it's not as good as that first one that I put on there. This antenna here is a little bit worse than that first one. So here's the 450 range on that uh, first antenna. And I'll check the other one. There's a second antenna and it's 5 dB worse. Not very good. And here's the third antenna on the 450 UHF range and it's uh, in between the first and the second one uh, but it's within spec uh, 